Hello everyone, welcome to Thursday edition of Take 5. This is going to be the last of my installments. I've done, this will be the fourth one. Sort of my reflections on India, as we have seen so much of India in the news, and all the trouble that they're going, it just has caused me to be a bit reflective, um, even to reflective with you. Uh, please pray for the people of India. Uh, if you think of it, please, please pray for the Good Shepherd Churches of India who try to serve their people in this time of the pandemic. If you're feeling generous, dfnusa.org, um, where you can give if you like. But in all my times in India, and DFN is one of the organizations I, I work with there, I've learned so many life lessons. Um, being there, seeing those beautiful people and the the, the ancient heritage of that country. And so here's my last lesson. And it's an interesting one. And it has to do with the fact that the Bible teaches us that we are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of God. And the reason I reflect on that in India, as you know, India is, a, is, a, is meant to be a pluralistic society with all the different religions that are there and that are legal. Um, the primary religion, and Christianity is there, Judaism is there, Islam is there, but the primary religion is Hinduism. And in Hinduism, um, it, it has, part of it is the caste system, and in the caste system it is taught that a Brahmin is their god of creation, and all of the castes of India, which has been outlawed, but it, there's still remnants of it there, um, the all of the different castes are different parts of Brahman's body. So the Brahmins, Brahma's body, the Brahmins are the head and you go all the way down. There are those that are um, at the bottom of it. We know them as the untouchables or the Dalits that are under the, the body. So they're not even part of Brahman's body, uh, Brahma's body. And so to be able to come and again, the organizations that I like to work with um, bring dignity. That's the key word. Bring dignity to, to those that are marginalized. To be able to come, and whether it's to, to the children or to the women who are in danger of being trafficked or all kinds of things, to be able to come and say, you have been made in the image of God. That's a revolutionary idea. To someone who feels like they are sort of at the bottom under the under God's feet, not all, not a part of His body at all. No, you're made in the image of God, and that ought to bring dignity, because God made you in His image, and it ought to bring a, an understanding of the sacredness of life. And so, why do we we long to stop slavery and human trafficking and even racism and poverty and you, know, you, th you throw right to life and abortion things uh, in there as well? There's a sacredness to life because we've been created in the image of God, and then part of that being created image of God is that we there's purpose. We represent God. We take care of His creation. Uh, psalm eight is a beautiful psalm that that begins this way. In verse 4, what is a human being that you remember him, asking God, the son of man that you look after him? You made him a little less than Elohim, a little less than God, and crowned him with glory and honor. This is human beings. You made him the ruler over the works of your hands, and you put everything under his feet, sheep and oxen, birds of the sky, fish of the sea. To be made in the image of God brings dignity, it brings purpose. You are to be taking care of God's creation. I learned that there, and I, we need to learn it here as well. We are made in the image of God. If, if anything describes our society today is that people struggle with identity. Here's your identity. God made you in his image, and that brings you dignity. That brings you purpose. You are made in God's image. Now, because of the ravages of of humanity, of sin, and in some ways that image has been dehumanized. It's still there. We, in theology class, we say the image of God has been effaced but not erased. Uh, it's still there, but man, is it upside down a little bit. In the book of Colossians, the Apostle Paul brings up the subject of Jesus, and he says that the Son is the invisible image of God. So Jesus himself is the perfect image of God. And then when we embrace Christ by faith, 
Um, we are told then in Colossians 3, Paul writes this, put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of our creator. So we're all made in the image of God. That image is damaged a bit, either by society or by sin or by um, a belief system. And yet that doesn't change the fact that we've been made in the image of God and that now in Christ, that image can be renewed, restored, and beautiful. And when you are in Christ, that can be true. One of the things of the image of God now is that it's it, it can be part of your being, almost like a, in a pond, that you image God. That now you're made in the image of God and you can image God, meaning your life, your character can be a reflection of who God is. It's true for anyone in Christ. It's true for you and it's true for all my friends in India. Thank you for thank you for taking the time to listen to my stories and the things that I've learned there. And I'll see you next week when we begin a new theme on Take 5. We'll see you.